degree and a master's degree in public policy, public administration. Uh, he got into the healthcare business a few years ago uh, and made a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. A lot of zeros, many, many zeros. And uh, in 1994, he decided to run for the school board over in Okaloosa County. And he won. He beat an incumbent. In 98, he was reelected once again with two thirds of the vote uh, of the uh, people in Okaloosa County. In 2000, he ran for superintendent of schools uh, in Okaloosa County and won, also by an overwhelming margin. Uh, he also ran again in 2004, I believe, and uh, won again. But he took the Okaloosa County schools, who had an average rating of C, to become the number one ranked uh, county in Florida in terms of academic performance. So Don is a, he is a, he's an up and comer. <coughs> Uh, I can tell you that uh, he's on the glide path to become president of the Senate in 2012. In fact, I don't think there's anybody out there right now who can match him toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe in debate or match him in fundraising or match him in his knowledge of public policy, which are three, like him or not, are some of the fundamental issues you need or, or, or things you need to have if you want to be Senate president. So it's my honor to uh, recognize a really good friend of mine and a gentleman who we're lucky to have represent us all along the panhandle here. Senator Don Gates. Thank you very much. I appreciate the chance to be here. As soon as I came to the door, Judge Stafford asked me for a stimulus check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Speaker Benz had it. <laughs> and I especially appreciate being introduced by, by Alan Benz. Alan Benz stood in this room, in this spot, when he was Speaker of the House and gave one of the most inspiring and thought-provoking presentations. I won't come anywhere near that today. But I can tell you this, I can tell you this, whether you're in Fort Walton Beach or in Panama City or in Pensacola, anywhere in Northwest Florida, and I found out any place in Florida, the best self-compliment I've ever been able to give to me is to say how proud I am to be an Allen Benz Republican. see uh, Justice Bell here, now that he's decided to find honest work again, <laughs> back from the Supreme Court. Justice Bell, as many of you know, uh, I think embodies uh, the principles uh, of Cincinnatus and George Washington to go and do public service, to make a sacrifice uh, for his family, to make a sacrifice uh, for his relationships in his community, to go and serve in the highest tribunal in our state and then come back home and pick up where he left off as a contributing member of the community that we see in the grocery store and we see at church and we see in events like this. And Justice Bell, I want you to know how proud I am of the service that you have given to the people of Florida and I want to make a threat. My threat is if Alan Benz and I have our way, we want to see you on the appeals court, we want to see you on the federal bench, and we'd love to see you on the Supreme Court of the United States. McClure, who does a great job as uh, JMI president, is right that I, uh, I served for a few years on the JMI board of directors until I was elected to the Senate. In fact, there are a number of people who have pointed out that when I left the JMI board and went to the Senate, I improved the quality of both organizations. <laughs> <laughs> and I as well appreciate uh, Speaker Benz uh, uh, acknowledging the uh, the opportunity that I had to serve uh, in education on the school board and the superintendent of schools in Okaloosa County. And I can't quite get that out of my system. I love to visit schools and spend time with teachers who are dedicated, who care, and who are effective. And this afternoon I'll have a chance on behalf of the legislature of Florida to present Brown Barge Middle School here in Pensacola with the state's highest award for academic achievement, uh, the A School Award. And when you consider how far Brown Barge has come in academic performance and the great work that they've done in, uh, in innovation, uh, I'm just proud to, to be here, uh, to be at Brown Barge uh, later today and to recognize the teachers and the parents and the students who've done so well there. I, uh, I was at Florosa Elementary School 
uh, which as you know is right on the boundary, is Ed Graynose, who's a member of the school board in Santa Rosa County, former mayor of uh, the city of Gulf Breeze, otherwise Grand High Mystic Ruler of Santa Rosa County. <laughs> as Ed knows, Florosa Elementary is right on the border between Santa Rosa County and Okaloosa County, and it's the school that serves the families where the moms and dads work at Pearlbert Field, which is the home of Air Force Special Operations. So I was invited recently to Florosa Elementary on career day, when the students invite you know, people who they think have interesting careers to come and talk. But you can imagine to Hurlburt what the parking lot on career day looked like. It was full of Humvees and guys in body armor and me in a blue suit. But some of the students had remembered that two years before I'd been their superintendent, so I was invited to a third grade class and asked if I would talk about, you know, career as superintendent and, and, and then as senator. And uh, so I did. And afterwards, I, I got, as I usually do, a little stack of letters from students. And one came from Christina. And Christina wrote, uh, Dear Superintendent Gates or Senator Gates or whatever it is you are now. <laughs> I love your job. 99% of me wants to grow up and be just like you and be senator of all the schools. She kind of put it together. <laughs> but 1% of my brain still wants to be a softball all-star. <laughs> so my question is, exactly how much of your brain do you need to be a senator? <laughs> right back soon because softball season's about to start. <laughs> Christina. Well, that's probably an open question. But when I wrote Christina back, I said, Dear Christina, you know, senators need all the brains they can get and as much as they can borrow, and that, Mr. Speaker, is why we have the House of Representatives. <laughs> but I told her that if it, was a, if it was a close call between senator and softball, play ball. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate the fact that, uh, that we meet today at a time when uh, Florida is facing some pretty tough issues. Undeniably, obviously, uh, we are facing some of the most difficult times in a generation. And at times like these, tough times, trying times, I turn for comfort to the classics. Homer. In this case, Homer Simpson. <laughs> and those of you who have children or grandchildren will remember if you watched the Simpson movie, the great scene where Bart comes to his father. Bart is all disconsolate and he says, Dad, this is the worst day of my life. And Homer says, No, son. This is the worst day of your life so far. <laughs> and that's the way the economic news seems to be. Every day seems to bring us another reason to be concerned. We now have 8% unemployment in Florida and it's getting worse. 10% of our friends and neighbors, one out of 10 in this state, are on food stamps. 300,000 properties sit vacant on a parched real estate market. 350,000 new Medicaid recipients on our rolls just in the last year. There are more, Medicaid, more new Medicaid recipients in Florida in the last year than there are entirely in the whole Commonwealth of Virginia. There is a $6 billion revenue shortfall facing the legislature as we go into session. The demand for government services because of the other indices I mentioned are going up. And the ability to meet those demands based on revenues is going down. Now, it's not always a crisis when government has less money. That's not necessarily a crisis. The real crisis is when an employer has to lay off a breadwinner. And there are people in this room with whom I've talked who have come to tears about having to do that in their own small businesses and companies. A crisis is when a community holds its breath as it sees the store windows and doors on Main Street being shuttered. A crisis is when an entrepreneur who has a real plan, a real product, a real idea,